Glory to God. Are we back ready? Okay. All right. Um, well, anyway, we're going to move ahead. I think they may have fixed the audio issue. And um, so back. We're glad to be here. Glad to be with you. And um, praise the Lord. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Um, we, uh, we were teaching on Sunday mornings coming up to Christmas on divine healing. And then we, um, you know, we had our fireside chat on Christmas weekend and uh, then moved into a new series on the first of the year on Christian character. And so I had said we were going to move into teaching on the healings and the ministry of Jesus. And so that's because we finished the study of soter uh, soteriology, the study of the human of the spirit or salvation. We're now moving the healing in the ministry of Jesus teaching I said we were going to do to the Wednesday nights. So Sunday mornings will be um, teaching on Christian character. Wednesday nights be on healings in the ministry of Jesus for however long it takes us to go through these <clears throat> and uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Can you say amen? A couple of notes. Uh, Merry uh, Orthodox Christmas Eve. Uh, today is uh, the Christmas Eve for the Eastern Orthodox Church. Tomorrow will be Eastern Orthodox Christmas. Um, so we uh, once again celebrate the birth of Jesus with our Eastern Orthodox uh, Church family. Uh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And uh, I guess today is 12 days after Christmas, so it's the Epiphany. Hallelujah. And so we're, you know, it's, it's all uh, being a reminder, Jesus has come into the earth as our Savior and redeemed us from our sin. Glory to God. And we are blessed to be in the kingdom. Can you say amen? <clears throat> um, I would be amiss not to address uh, national issues. We in the church need to be in prayer. Um, there is, you know, um, stuff going on in D.C. And it is, um, it's not, if it is conservative, it's, it's, it's just as wrong as all the mess that was going on this past summer and stuff. With the other crowd, burning and looting, we have to pray for our nation that there be peace and harmony, and that you know the unrest and the the division and the um, the anarchy um, is stopped. And we have, as a church, need to be the forerunners of, of you know having peace in our nation, our land healed. Praise the Lord! So we need to be doing that. We can't just let this run rampant. And, um, you know, fuss about it, as we said on our Christmas uh, fireside chat service, reflect, um, renew or restore and run. Hallelujah. What we did wrong last year, um, what we can do to make things right and then run with what God gives us. Praise the Lord to be witnesses for Jesus. Glory to God. All right. So all that aside, hallelujah, uh, we're going to move now <clears throat> into healings in the ministry of Jesus you know we were talking about uh, last month on our Sunday morning services how that healing belongs to all of us uh, and we're right in the middle of um, now whether you you know count whatever's going on with COVID you know you like it or not uh, the numbers for COVID are out the roof now there is no flu there is no common cold or not even people dying of old age everything <laughs> everything is COVID but even if you, you would take the numbers where they test for COVID um, and it's really testing for the SARS, I forgot, SARS-5 or something, uh, indicators, uh, which could be COVID-2, it could be COVID-19, you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, they're calling it COVID-19. and But those numbers are up, and people are sick. And, and if they get COVID-19, it is, in some cases, very serious. And um, so we need to be proactive in faith. We can't be afraid. We have to be believing God. Hallelujah. I thought I, was, I thought I was going to sneeze. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, 
We need to be in faith about the things of God. We need to be believing God. And uh, we need to be standing in faith against the powers and rulers of the darkness of this world. And we need to stand in faith about our health for our bodies. And you know, we could take that other places for our country, but right now we're talking about healing. So we want to talk about, so we, we talked about how that it belongs to us. And in establishing our case of healing and how to receive healing and so forth, uh, it's always good to look at the Bible. <laughs> Duh. Hallelujah. Um, and so let's talk about these facts. Uh, 32 references, 31 references, I'm sorry. 31 references are made in the Gospels to Jesus healing someone. Now, because we have the synoptic Gospels, that is Matthew, Mark, and Luke, um, who, who oftentimes, and there are some cases where John covers something that, they, you know, that all four Gospel writers cover the same story or event. But because of that, um, we have overlapping accounts of a healing. In other words, you might have a healing that all three synoptic gospels, co I mean, uh, covered, writers covered, or there might be all four of the gospel writers covered it. And, um, and so we don't have 31 distinctive recordings of healings in the ministry of Jesus. Actually, we have 19 different ones. Okay. So the 31, 19 are distinctive. In other words, 12 of them are re reoccurrences in another gospel of covering or uh, recording that same event. Hallelujah. And so we have 31 recorded healings in the, in the gospels. We have of which 19 are distinct or different healings. In other words, again, three may cover the same one, but that's not three different ones. That's the same one covered three times. And so we eliminate in that number uh, 12. Now we're not eliminating the, from the Bible. We're just saying uh, for, for the purpose of what we're sharing, there are 19 distinct healing or healing miracles in the ministry of Jesus in the four gospels. Now you don't need but two or three to see what God does. We have 19. Hallelujah. Now we'll just go ahead and throw this out there of the 19. 12 directly or indirectly attribute the faith of the individual as to the reason they were healed. Okay? So it wasn't a working of miracles. It wasn't a Jesus went and healed them, and they were just, they were just totally out of, the, out of the picture as far as their faith. 12 of them state directly or indirectly that it was their faith. Okay? Um, so... Meaning about 60% of the healings that took place in the Bible was based on the faith of the individual. Hallelujah. So let's, let's go through the 19 and, and I, and I will give you the separate references. I'll read from one of the references in the uh, multiple covered, but give you the other references just so you'll have that <clears throat> as we go. So you can have a pen or pencil and write that down. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. Let's look number one at the healing of the nobleman's son found in John chapter four. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I've got all these printed out. So I'm going to set my Bible off to the side. Uh, I already have all the, the entire scripture over here. And so uh, just give myself a little more room to work on this huge podium I have here. Um, let's let me, let me read this. So John came, I mean, so Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman who was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. And the nobleman said unto her, Sir, come down ere my child die. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth and the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him and he went his way and as he was going down his servants met him and told him saying thy son liveth then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend and they said unto him yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him so the father knew that it was the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, 
and himself believed in his whole house. This, again, is the second miracle that Jesus did when he came out of Judea into Galilee. So notice here some things. Um, Jesus spoke a word, but the Bible clearly makes, you know, states, and the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him and went his way. It's important for us to note that it didn't say that Jesus, spoke, the word man took off and ran home to check to see if it actually happened or not. Um, he just went his way. And we find out it's the next day before he runs into the servants. It's not like he, you know, uh, beeline straight home and, and, and didn't stop and didn't eat and just rush, rush, rush. Um, we find him the next day in the service meeting him. So they're coming from the house. He's headed home. They meet, find out it's the exact same time as to when he, he knew that it was uh, when Jesus said, your son lives, and he believed. Hallelujah. And so we mark this as a, the faith of the individual. Why? Because if the man had not believed the word, it wouldn't have worked. How do you know that? The Hebrews, we got a very interesting statement in the, the 10th chapter of Hebrews. It said that the word did not profit them, be, not being mixed with faith. The word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. So Jesus, had Jesus spoken, and this man not mixed faith with the word, had not believed the word Jesus had spoken unto him, it wouldn't have worked. Hello? Well, how do you know that? You know, there's a place, uh, um, and I believe it might be Matthew's gospel, the fifth chapter. Uh, Y'all could correct me if you find out I'm wrong. But it talks about, that, you know, he could there do no mighty work. Save he laid his hand on a few sick, or actually the Greek says sickly folks. People with minor ailments and healed them. And the next thing it tells us is, and, they, and he marveled because of their unbelief. Now notice it said that when Jesus said this, it says, and he could there do no mighty work. And he marveled because of their unbelief. He marveled because of their unbelief. Unbelief will thwart God's healing mercies or power if you don't believe. Just like if you don't believe, it can stop God's saving power from working in your life. It will stop it. Okay? They that come to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Praise God. Can someone say amen? Hallelujah. So we got Matthew 13 and, and Mark 6. Okay, Mark 6 what? Five. five. Mark 6, 5. Okay. He, I do there's a five in there somewhere. All right. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, nobleman's son, faith of the individual. Let's look at healing Sam, Simon's uh, mother-in-law. Uh, Matthew 8, 14 and 15. Mark 1, 30 and 31, and Luke 4, 38 and 39. So we're going to read from Matthew 8, 14 and 15. Again, the secondary verses are Mark 1, 30 and 31, and Luke 4, 38 and 39, and there's not a John. Okay. Hallelujah. So this is a three, this is a three recording of the same miracle. And when Jesus was coming to Simon Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. Hallelujah. Now, we don't have any, record, we don't have any um, recognition of an individual faith act, active here. So this, can be work, this could be uh, gifts of healings, um, you know, et cetera. Uh, we, don't, we don't have um, anything where it says she believed, um, you know, according to your faith be it done unto you. And so we mark this in the category of, of a gift of healing uh, or, or, or healing miracle. Praise God. Amen. So, so far we're one to one. Let's look um, at now the healing of the leper. Now we have Matthew 8, 2 and 4. Mark 1, 40 through 45. And Luke 5, 12 through 14. And we're going to look... Uh, Let's take, let's take Mark's, 140 through 45. 
And there came a leper unto him, beseeching him, kneeling down to him and saying, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Hallelujah. Now, here we have a, we have a situation. And I'm going to say, honestly, the healing of the leper is a commentary on a vast majority of people in the church. They know God can heal. As a matter of fact, you can find an agnostic or an atheist and ask them, well, okay, you don't believe in God or you're not sure if there's a God, but if there was a God, could he heal people? And they'll say, well, yeah, well, if there was a God, he could. I just don't know if there is a God or I don't believe there is. But in the concept of God, if he was God, uh, then he would be able to heal. And so even then in the church, we've got a vast majority of Christians who believe that God can. And that even upon occasion, God does. They're just not convinced, for, for whatever reason, well, bad teaching is one of them, that God wants to all the time. That it is God's will to heal. Okay? And so this man comes to Jesus, this leper comes to Jesus, and says, let me, let me, let me take the King Jimmy off of it. Okay, if thou wilt. I know you're able to heal my son. I just don't know if you're willing. Where does faith begin? We've said this numerous times. 